think going out on your own, that's what you know a lot of people aspire to do, but most people will fail in the first few years out on their own. What do you think were the keys to the success of that first internet business you had? Well, let me just say the very first thing is people often think they have an idea, and then the very next thing is they have their hand out, and where's my venture capital money, and I'm going to start a business. You don't really know what your business is when you have an idea. You, don't, you have to get customers, you have to get revenues, you have to get employees, you have to deliver a product, you have to service that product, you have to, you have to handle things when things go wrong. So always take care of risk. So people think, oh, I'm going to go out and be an entrepreneur, I'm going to take a risk, I'm going to be like a cowboy and quit my job and start um, a food truck and delivering <laughs> meals for $5 to office workers, so, or I'm going to start the Uber for maids or whatever. That's, that's risky. I stayed at my full-time job for 18 months while building a company on the side. The less specific advice is invest in yourself. Nobody knew what good web design was, what good web interfaces were, so I had to constantly read. So that was one way I invested in myself. Hmm. Another way I invested in myself is I'm a shy and even introverted person. Like I don't like to be at a networking event. I like to just sit at home, and at that time I would sit at home and program. And so. I had to invest in myself by going to networking events, learning how to meet people. So these were very difficult things for me. I had to invest in myself to overcome my shyness and, and invest in myself to learn technology. Investing in yourself every day, and there's lots of ways to do it, which we could talk about later, but investing in yourself every day is really a, an important skill. So then you sold that business for $15 million? Something that like that, yeah. $15 that. Million cash. And then... Crash and burn. Yeah, by the way, I'm not bragging because <laughs> two years later, two years later almost to the day, uh, maybe two and a half years later, I had $143 in my ATM. It was the worst crash and burn ever. I, did not, I stopped <laughs> mitigating risk. I was so stupid, and it's really, like, it's one thing to make it. There's three skills, making it, keeping it, growing it. So I was able to make mm -hmm. it, but I made it in a time which afterwards I saw, oh, my God, that was the lottery. It was like the Internet boom. Mm. I didn't keep it, and I didn't grow it. So I didn't have the two most important skills. Making it, for most people listening, is very hard, and it is very hard. It requires, you know, all these things we discussed before and then some, but keeping it is, is even harder. So before we wrap up, I want to talk to how you transitioned to your wildly successful podcast over, what, 12 million downloads, I think I read? You know, um, the stat updated? Maybe, maybe, maybe a little more, yeah. Um, so how did that come about? And, and I have a bunch of podcasts. So overall, maybe yeah, like have, 20 yeah. million downloads. Because you have Ask Altucher as well, right? Yeah, and I have right? Question of the Day with oh, okay. uh, Stephen wow. Dubner from Freakonomics. We do it together. Oh, cool. I didn't realize you were a part of that one. So how? what is your advice for people starting podcasts, wanting to grow a podcast? You know, what have you learned through that? What I've learned, I mean, it takes me out of my comfort zone to call somebody that I don't know, that I'm just, is like a hero of mine, and say, hey, I would love to talk to you, and here are the reasons I why. I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know that's hard. And then, like you said, the preparation. I'll prepare for like weeks before a, for a one-hour guest, mm -hmm. uh, and you've got to do that. You've got to over-promise and over-deliver. So reach for the stars on who you're asking, but just just do it. Just do a bunch of interviews and record them with an iPod at first. Like you don't need any fancy equipment, nothing. Just record an interview between you and another person and then ask questions that nobody else would ask. Like, mm. just read everything they've done. I watch other interviews they do, and just just devour that person um, beforehand. And so you, so when, when you get them in the interview, get them off book. That's one thing I think you're different than a lot of people I interview, because you don't have, like, a quarterly target, right? No, never. Which I think is so, it's kind of mind-boggling. I might be <laughs> dead in a quarter. Yeah, but I just how want do you, today. I want. I'm not. I'm probably not going to die today. What about the podcast? Surely you have a you have a production plan. You have. I mean, your business is. You have to be tracking metrics somewhere, or else what? You yeah, know? I try to improve. So okay. I try to get better as an interviewer. I try to listen to other interviewers. I try to get good guests. Just trying. Gotcha. I'm not saying, oh, if I don't hit like a gazillion downloads, my <laughs> podcast is awful. So now, finally, share about how to recover from that because now you feel like you have true success, right? Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you can ever say, you know, one has true success. I think the real things I focus on and I try to improve every day is physical health. 48 years old, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, but physical health just means eating well, sleeping well, nutrition, maybe a little exercise, you know, moving. 
Um, emotional health, that's the five people I ha spend my time with. Um, investing in my creativity, I make sure I'm creative every single day. It's really important, I try to improve in every possible way and I try to challenge myself creatively. Because what happens is, let's say you get hit by a car and it's not a bad accident but you have to be in bed for three weeks. Your legs are, go you're gonna need physical therapy to walk again because that's how fast muscles atrophy, your leg muscles will atrophy. The idea, I call it the idea muscle because it atrophies just as quickly. And mm -hmm. most of us have atrophied idea muscles. I did too, and still do on occasion if I don't do this practice. And what I found was writing 10 ideas a day. And they, and they don't have to be ideas about what can I do for a business. They could be ideas for, oh, oh, here's 10 ideas Kelsey should have for guests. Or here's 10 ideas for Amazon to improve their self-publishing or Google to improve their search engine. Or here's mm -hmm. 10 ideas for how I can help people today. There could be all sorts of ideas. Here's 10 ideas for books I can write. I realized after doing these 10 ideas a day for six months, it was like I had become an idea machine. Mm -hmm. Like you could just parachute me in the desert and I'd figure out how to get like a car and a battery and whatever <laughs> and get out of there. And then solve the ability to every single day solve these difficult gratitude problems. I think this is a really important thing because so many people charge, oh, $15,000 for a class on entrepreneurship, <laughs> when really like one of the most important things is something you could do for free when you wake up in the morning, mm. which is just find four or five things to be grateful for. And not just easy things, like every day I could wake up and say, oh, I'm grateful for my kids or whatever. That's the easy stuff. But when you're in a difficult situation, which happens to all of us, no mm -hmm. matter who you are, like a difficult situation happens. You're, you're in the middle of a business, it's a great business, but you, learn your, you lose your biggest customer or you're a critical employee. How can you find, in a, or, or, you're, or a spouse leaves you, yeah. or you lose money, how can you find in this difficult situation something to be grateful for? And I call that difficult gratitude problems. And I actually mm -hmm. go one step further in terms of a gratitude practice, which is every day try to solve a difficult gratitude problem. Because I think then you exercise mm -hmm. and you make this gratitude muscle sweat. And that actually makes you good at it, which has surprising benefits. Like no one thinks, oh, how can I be good at gratitude? It's actually really hard. And to, to exercise, to make that muscle sweat is incredibly valuable. Man, there is so much we can learn from that interview. But here are my keys to success from my interview with James Altucher. Number one, reinvent yourself. Don't be afraid to change directions. Altucher changed courses in life multiple times, transferring skills and experiences each time. He says it's important to keep a beginner's mind and keep reinventing yourself. Number two, invest in yourself. He says investing in yourself every day is an important skill. He got a mentor, he read books, he studied sales, he went to networking events and pushed himself outside of his comfort zone. This investment in himself paid off, leading to the sale of his first business for close to $15 million. Number three, push yourself. Many entrepreneurs focus on the money, he says, but that's a mistake. Instead, you should push yourself to become the best at a particular craft, especially when it comes to ideas. He pushes himself to come up with 10 new unique ideas every single day and pushed himself outside of his comfort zone. So be sure and push yourself every day. Lastly, choose yourself. Now, Altucher wrote a book called Choose Yourself, talking about creating your own career path, which he has definitely done. But specifically, I mean that you should choose yourself and your internal development over just making money. For example, he chooses to be active each day, he eats well, he sleeps well, he takes time every day for gratitude and personal growth. He says we have a short life and we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So choose yourself by choosing to spend time with the best people. For more inspiring articles and videos, go to success.com. And to see my full interview with James Altucher, go to thepursuit.tv.